Hello folks and welcome. I have a subscriber request to do a video on Peppermint OS fully loaded. Now Peppermint has a couple of different ISOs. Um, some of them are really stripped down and the standard version does not have what fully loaded has. One of the biggest differences is software manager. So I'm going to talk about the, uh, the differences. This is an XFCE desktop. I will give you full system information in a second. Um, so one of the things that you'll find on the standard version is none of these will be installed. You'll have to install them manually. It's not a big deal though. Not a big deal at all. These are obviously not all those software packages they have. This is just some, if you want to call it popular or suggested. So you can tell uh, Firefox ESR is installed here. I can certainly install these others. All right. so. Let me probably do uh, one better. Let me give you system information first, and then we'll move on to a website that'll give you full details on Peppermint. All right, I'm going to use INXI, and I'll make this larger for you. And um, scroll to the top. Not really going to talk about all my stuff, and uh, but I will tell you one more time that I'm filming in 1080. Okay. 6.1 series kernel XFCE 418.1. This is Peppermint OS Bookworm. Uh, GCC, if you care, is 12.2, 64-bit OS. If you need the bare minimum specifications, you can either go to Peppermint's website, which I'll show in a second, or you can just look on the internet. Alt and F4 to close, and now I'm going to continue to a web browser. Let's talk a little bit about Peppermint OS if you know nothing about it. I'm using DistroWatch. I like the way DistroWatch culminates information. However, in this case today, there's an error. At least I believe so. But I'm gonna first start with Peppermint OS is out of the UK, United Kingdom. It comes in two flavors, Debian and this one here. And I'm gonna to try to pronounce that, Duvian. Anyways, XFCE desktop live medium. I do not use the popularity factor at all on DistroWatch, but I do appreciate how they lay out their information. This is an error, I believe. It should say seven on there, not two. Downstairs, if I go to this area here, I believe this should say 24, not 23. You will see what I'm talking about in a second. Over here, if I go to peppermintos.com, so if you wanted to get this distribution, try it out for yourself, that kind of thing you can uh, do the download. I'm gonna just point to this over here for a second. So July 1, 2024, not 23, a new release. Actually, a couple of them. And the release notes. So their flagship is here. Um, this is not fully loaded. The one below it is fully loaded. The standard version is uh, 6432 and ARM. You got the Debian base and the other one. I'm using fully loaded today and that was the user's request is to do a video on this one. So I'm doing that for you, for that person and for the rest of you uh, folks on my channel. 64-bit, 32-bit, I really don't have any more 32-bit computers anymore. Most of my stuff is all 64, has been for five years. So I'm using Debian. This is the one I downloaded. So this ISO is a little bit bigger than this one. And the major difference between the two, just to discuss one tool, is Software Manager. You'll find Software Manager in Fully Loaded, but not in the standard version, because I did download that to check. The other thing that uh, if you do like TimeShift as a system restore utility, it uses rsync, uh, is also found on the Fully Loaded ISO and not found on this ISO if you care about those kind of things. There's also other builds in here. Just to let you see, they have lots of flavors for you. PeppermintOS.com. All right, moving across the bottom, simple calendar, you know, the volume thing, the network thing, notification thing, the updater, battery information, and so forth. Not really anything that I'm gonna click on. All right, you got a help uh, application finder here and there's an arrow right next to it also. Synaptic is found in both the standard version and also fully loaded. And so that means you can use um, terminal, synaptic, 
and if you are using fully loaded also software manager some of you folks that like point and click stuff will probably find software manager very friendly to use I'll come back to it later. All right. Full system information. I think I already gave that to you, but I'm going to cover it one more time. At the top. Whoop, a little too big, right? Would help if I scroll up. 61. Okay, 4181. All right, I'm going to continue now. All right, so Thunar is a, the latest version is 4.18.4. And uh, with Thunar, I'm going to make that large. Um, you know, you can make these jumbo or you can make them really dinky. Okay, hopefully you've seen some of my videos before. All right, I'm going to use F3 and F3 is adjustable. What is F3? F3 is split view. Extra pane, whatever you want to call this thing. The icons are independently resizable. What good is this? Well, I'm going to click on the demo drive. I'm using a single digit password today, just, uh, just for simplicity reason. I don't recommend that kind of stuff though. But uh, more importantly, if I needed to transfer some files over to here, and um, I'm not sure what I'm going to use. I'll, let me do some, maybe just a script file or something, or even the folder. All I'm doing is making a copy going from what? Um, the demo drive over to the documents folder of PMOS user. That's the name of the user for today. All right, F3 to turn that back off. So if I make these jumbo and I can make these tiny and switch between and it'll remember those. If you turn this feature on, it is off by default. Edit preferences. This is normally found in this location. That means it resizes icons everywhere the same. If you do that, they do it independently. It's a very nice feature. I like it. And I will now move on. The main menu, accessories. You'll also find some influences from Linux Mint. One of them is Software Manager. The other one is called um, Mint Stick, which provides you with tools like USB Image Writer. It looks like that. It's extremely simple to use. You put your ISO in there, you stick a USB stick, and you do a write. The same thing goes with the um, US Stick formatter. You put in a stick, you select how you want it to format. You can leave the label or change it and hit Format. These are extremely simple tools. The other influences I'm just going to discuss, and you will see them as I move, is uh, Software Manager is one of them, and also Time Shift. Time Shift is also maintained by Linux Mint. Okay, moving along to games, there's four. Graphics, you have GIMP and Inkscape, just to name two. Internet comes pre-installed with Firefox. Uh, you can install other browsers, of course. On your standard version, you will have to install Firefox yourself. Not a big deal. Multimedia, I installed Simple Screen. The rest of the stuff was pre-installed. Uh, LibreOffice Writer is 7.4 if you care. All right, settings. This is also adjustable. All right, so I'm going to stop at P, um, uh, Btop for a second. A lot of you folks may know what this is and maybe not so much. So um, I'm going to run this one more time. So this is a regular top now. I'm going to open up another box. Top is normally found on every Linux distro. And this is B top. There's the difference on these two. Okay, this one I'll have to force close. This one I'll just do X in the corner. Okay. Where did I stop off at? I was down in settings. All right, you have G parted and there is also the GNOME disk utility if you look for it. Okay, skipping around, we have um, Synaptic and we have Software Manager. Maybe it might be a good time to open these now. 
So I'll give you a package count where the software is coming from and then I'll open up Software Manager. You can also use what? Terminal to install software. I'm using a single digit password today. 65,847, this is an installed system. I'm not running it live. All right, so where's the stuff coming from? All right, you can always pause this video and uh, go backwards. I'm not going to leave the screen open for very long. All right, 65,847 is what you have to play with. I'm going to click my shortcut because I just placed it on the panel. And this is Software Manager. This looks identical to the Linux Mint Software Manager because I believe it is. This says pep install on Linux Mint. It says mint install. All right, so this software manager though mimics what Linux Mint 22 looks like though. I thought that was interesting because in the uh, beta version of Linux Mint 22, the preference box looks exactly like this. Show unverified flat packs is turned off by default. You do not see this in 21.3, their current release little different. So if you want VLC for instance, there's your install key. All right, point and click. If you see a, a check mark, that means it's installed. Now grep is not, un, uh, you can't uninstall this, but you can uninstall unzip. Uh, you may see stuff like this, cannot remove. That means it's required by the system. This one, not so much. This one has a removal key. Something is not installed, like that one, you got an install key. Very simple to use. So what's the difference between the standard version and the fully loaded? Software Manager comes pre-installed on fully loaded. So some of you folks that love that point and click stuff, you may want this version. Where did I stop off at? Down here, I believe. So there are three ways to install software, Synaptic, Software Manager, and Terminal in this version. If you're using the standard version, then you can use Synaptic or Terminal or go install some stuff. All right, the welcome screen I showed you earlier, there are some suggested packages here also, which include browsers and other stuff. Now on the standard version, as I pointed out in the beginning of this video, most of these, if any are not installed. Now time shift is a backup tool that is maintained by Mint. So let me type in TI just to show you the search feature in here. All right, and I'm gonna put in my single digit password and authenticate. Now since I just installed this per request of a subscriber, uh, I didn't have enough time to have five of these, but generally in a week, your schedule is gonna have five of these if you decide to use this system. Hamburger menu time or three dots. Linux Mint maintains this on GitHub as an FYI. This is a system restore utility. It's not a true backup program, as one would say, of your personal files. And it does use rsync. If you haven't seen any of my videos on rsync, I have plenty of them. All right, generally what you're doing here is you're rsyncing your files to a um, location and you can see that this is the particular drive I'm doing it, format it with extension 4 in this case. These are my internal hard drives for other purposes. All right, the schedule is set for do this once a day, providing you log in to your system for at least 5 to 10 minutes. And it will perform a proper backup, except it is not including your user files. It's not meant to. That's why I make different videos on rsync or even using uh, tar files tape archive i have all kinds of backup videos all right let's go on uh, with system for a second time shift again is found down here um, and uh, be careful with bleach, bleach bit if you use that and uh, gparted is also found here and also you can type in disk the um, gnome disk utility is also loaded. So there's two choices. You can also find Gparted on the live media. Okay, so down here is your standard settings manager. These are your themes or styles. 
icon sets if you don't like the red keep in mind that's the peppermint to colors and uh, you can pick others does not come uh, install with any other mouse themes however I have videos and show you how to you you can actually just use your file manager to install extra mouse cursors and I provide you with a nonprofit website you can get hundreds of those things all right print settings my printer is a brother printer I love this printer because it uh, works on all my systems no hassle whatsoever my wireless color laser is found not only by every Linux distribution but more importantly also by Microsoft Windows Mac and even my iPhone so I have nothing but good things to say about brother printer you plug them in and pretty much set them up and they just keep working at least in my book all right while we're in here let's talk about system we have software manager shortcut I have it also on the panel Synaptic Package Manager. So again, in fully loaded, you've got Software Manager, Synaptic, and Terminal to install software. Don't forget about Time Shift for doing your system restores in case something goes wrong. It's always a good idea to activate that tool. It doesn't come turned on automatically. You have to turn it on. So if you don't like Top, you may want to try BTOP++. Down here, You've got a lock screen, you have a logout, and uh, I'm going to show you how to make one of these. That's an instantaneous power key by right clicking on the screen. Create launcher. So if you are to do a power launcher, this is not the same thing. Okay, so this is managing power. So I'm calling my mind power off, but I'm not going to create that because it's already pre-filled in. So what I'm going to do is do this from scratch. The command for that is uh, system CTL space power off. If you type that in, you can also use another command, but uh, more importantly, you can use this one. What's a good icon for this? Just type in uh, S-H-U-T. You'll find a system shutdown icon. I think this is plenty good. You don't have to do any of this other stuff. You just have to put in a name. Uh, if you can't read that, again, filming in 1080, it's system CTL, one word, space, power off, create, done. You double click on that, you're gonna instantaneously power down your system. Save your files. Right click on the screen, desktop settings. In the standard version, the only wallpaper you get is the peppermint plant. Okay, and the fully loaded, you get these extra wallpapers. You can certainly bring in your own. Stick them in your um, photo area. In other words, pictures. Right click, set as wallpaper. These could be photos of anything. Okay, I'm gonna click this back. Icon sizes are done over here. This is not default. It is about half of that. So that's why that's big. If you want some system icons, you can turn these on if you like that kind of stuff. I personally don't. I have a perfectly good file manager sitting here. As a last bonus feature, right-clicking on this menu icon, hitting Properties, Appearance, we can talk about the little rodent here if you want that or if you want to change that to your stuff my stuff whatever you want don't like the little rodent click the picture find something else you like you can even bring in your own custom icon if you want but uh, I'm gonna put this back to default because that's normally default don't forget also, if you don't like the tiny icons in here, you can change the sizes from here and here. This is pretty standard XFCE whisker menu stuff. Thank you for watching.